YouTube, Trevor here, Summit or Nothing. Tom here, not Summit or Nothing. Joined today by Tom, the artist formerly known as Trail Cook. <laughs> what, what are you now, off the beaten pot? Off the beaten pot. Off the beaten pot. He's joining me today for my first collaboration. We're going out onto Dartmoor. We started at Cadover Bridge. We're going to do a bit of a hike, a bit of a wild camp, but most importantly, he's going to teach me how to cook on a tranger. So I'm very excited about that. None of these uh, boiling the bags. Proper food on the trail. Yeah, looking forward to it. Okay, so we started our walk today at Cadover Bridge, and then we followed this river here, which is the River Plym, until we've come to this point, which is the Blacker Brook. So now we're here where the Blacker Brook enters the River Plym. We carry on this track, following up here, around this network of fields here, which I take it is over here, all this area there, farmland. And then uh, we're working up to Fowl's Worthy Warren, which looks like that area up there. Today Tom's letting me use his Latrangia Mini I've got, isn't it? Right, yeah. So I'm gonna have a go on that. And what are you cooking on? My own little set. So I have the Trangia Triangle, it packs down flat, but I've then spent a bit of time putting pots and pans together to try and make a set that suits me. So I think I'm there with it really, but then I always find summits to improve, but I've got to stop spending money. So. <laughs> Yeah, That's my the own... trouble, isn't it? Yeah. Addictive. It is addictive, yeah. I'd rather spend the money on stuff I don't have, like, for example, a sleeping bag that's not paper thin. <laughs> across these settlements as we're heading up to Trowelsworthy Tor. This is Trowelsworthy Warren. You can see over here the clay pits and that's where we've come from, back along there. Cut over bridge in the distance. And now just a little climb up to there. Summit of trails will be tall. Some stunning views here. It opens up. Pretty sure that's gutter tour there. We sort of camped down in that valley. Pretty sure because that's sheep tour over there. And then over behind that is Sharpit tour. Uh, it is worth mentioning that this walk today is from Dartmoor's tour bagger, Max. Also a book, John Earl's Walking on Dartmoor. So it's a bit of his walk and a bit of the walk from the book and maybe a bit of our own exploration. So shout out again, Max, thank you. Do you want to give one? Oh, what's that? Something or nothing? Kidding, I feel like I'm an imposter. No, that's all right. Well, all right. Yeah, it's an honour. Something or nothing! Oh yeah, it feels good. It yeah, does, doesn't it? Yeah. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> So this is a twin summit of Trowsworthy Tour. We're going up to the second one, and then we'll be making our way to Hen Tour. Whether that will be where we are when we do some cooking, we'll see. But what's first on the menu, Tom? We're going to have chili chorizo calzone pizza. Hey, okay. cooked on a tranja. Cooked on a tranja. Pop job. Okay, so we're here now at Great 
Trailsworthy tour and then we've worked out that we want to be heading northeast up over there is Hentor. That's a bit of a challenge here. There is a stone there, but will I get across to that one? I don't know how deep it is in there. It's the trouble. Rip. Oh, I got that far. You know, I hate this. I didn't put my gaiters on either, did I? Um, wait there. I did make a fuss to get there, and that was fairly easy to be honest. But I'd just like to have something to sort of pole vault across, so I've uh, extended my tripod to jump over there. Lovely jubbly. Easy that was. More here. Hot. <laughs> Ta-da! Here we go now. There's hen tours coming into view. And all this area, the moor over here, Stunning. So you can see the standing stones on that hill and there's stone rows over there. That's where we come down from higher heart all. And there's the old farmhouse we had a look around. And then we went up a uh, camped under gutter tour. So we're about to eat, but we're gonna just have a look up the top first, have a summit, and then uh, just getting some grub on. Exciting. I think one of my favorite things about walking, the reason why I've grown to like the cooking side of it. One, I love the gear. I love the trencher and the bits and the pots and the pans. And then I like eating something nice. And then when you look back on this trip, just that, just that tangible taste will take you back to whatever view we're gonna explore now. And just this whole moment, I guess. So yeah. maybe I'm... Just, oh, I'm just lazy, I just enjoy resting. There we go. Entour. A bit blustery. Nice spot. It is a nice tour. Here we go then, right. bit Tranger cooking. Tranger cooking with Tom off the beaten pot. Link below to his channel, go and check him out. For this meal, you should have in here one pack containing everything you need. So I've got two yep. tortillas. I've got that. A bit of silver in there, which has got chopped chorizo and powdered Heinz tomato soup. And that oh, is right. going to be our tomato sauce. So what do I need first? Yeah. You need your sauce mix, which is smoked chipotle chili flakes and oregano tiny bit of pepper. Looks pretty illegal when it's in a bag, doesn't yeah. it? Reminds me of my college days. So this is going straight in there? Straight in. And yours? Yep. Wait! No, that's fine, yeah. Carry <laughs> Now the uh, contents, the flavour. And then we're going to add water until it's slightly thinner than the pizza sauce that you're, that you're probably imagining. Give it a good old mix. Get it on the heat. That's what we get. It's coming up to heat now. That, that's good you to go then. then? Yeah. Yep. So next stage of proceedings is grab one of your breads and just smear it round. I, I do the chorizo next. Get the mozzarella on there. Baba. Put that <coughs> in there now. You just want to keep your eye on that. Yeah. We'll just start to see under. it browning. I left mine on, I wasn't checking. That's so right. See It'll here. be lovely. It'll taste like it's um, but, uh, stone baked. I like things burnt. That's anyway. a better side. Yeah. I'm going for mine. Right, here we go. I'm going to try it. Mmm. Good Tom. Freshly cooked, tasty. When you cook anything, it's always uh, rewarding, isn't it? Cooking yeah. In your own food. Yeah. Comfort, convenience. Cheers, Tom. Cheers, Trev. Well, we've had some food. Thank you, Tom, for that. As that very well, delicious. Yeah. I enjoyed that. Right, so I've just um, gone to readjust the map so I can get everything in. And this here isn't where I've met two points of folded. That is just ripped <laughs> right in half. I think it's time for a new map, don't you? 
it's over at Hentor and Nick's. We're going to go and look up. It's like a high point there. Looks like just a trig point on its own. And then we get on a track and follow the track down to Shell Top. So from here, we've got to work out our bearing up to that trig point. Got everything? Probably not, but it seems so. <laughs> lack of health <laughs> mainly the grass yeah it's a bit featureless along here but up there somewhere there's a trick point with our name on it no, ain't got our name. Right. Yeah. Wouldn't it? it'd be yeah. weird wouldn't yeah. it it'd be like that oh, that's weird so we're gonna find it do a bit more but look nice big bit of slab a granite slab we just stopped at seems like the place to stop Tom. Bang on. Almost like we planned that. <laughs> I was getting hard work along there. Soon we find a track. So, a bit easier walking. Oh, yes, please. A bit sloppy under the feet here, isn't it? Squelching away here. But here we are. A trick point. We won't be getting right up next to that, I don't think. That was a thankless exercise for this one. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Shell top next. Onwards. Onwards. Bloody raining. To be fair though, spot on the forecast. Yeah. You know it's it's coming. Good, I was hoping it wasn't, but they said it was. Of course, cool. the clay pit looks big from here, doesn't it? Yeah. Looks like a nice spot for a swim. It does, doesn't it? Look how blue it is. <laughs> so shell top. It looked more impressive when we was yeah. over there, didn't it? It's this impressive. morning we was there. Yeah. That was the first two tours we come up from. And it looked impressive looking up here then. But uh, this is it. This is a little hunk of granite. So we're going to have a look now over here. You see the pimple on the horizon? That's Penn Beacon. So we're going to go and check, check that out. So you enjoying yourself in Tom? I am very much, you? Yeah, very good. No awkward silences. Yeah. <laughs> Never met up with a stranger on the walls. I liked in the week we sort of exchanged phone numbers. What was it you said? Well, you said it could be, it, it could be good. Fun. I said, oh, it could be horrendous. When you look at it on paper, I'm meeting a man on a desolate moor that I met on the internet. <laughs> to which I said, well, at least we didn't meet on Grinder. To which he replies. <laughs> uh, imagine if we'd met on Grinder. You invited me tour bagging. How disappointed I'd be <laughs> when we went hiking. <laughs> Here we are, Penn Beacon. What was that, 10, 15 minute walk, 10 minutes? <laughs> yeah, it depends on who you meet along the way. Yeah. <laughs> we met a chap who was trying to tell us somewhere to go. And he couldn't remember the name of it and we stood there for a good five minutes waiting for him to remember. <laughs> it got a bit awkward. Oh, it looks like there was a, like an old boundary line. It goes all the way up to the, that beacon. It does, doesn't it? It's definitely a visible line there. Oh, it's raining now. See that? Wet. So I'll try and get this camera away a minute. We're going to look for somewhere to set up camp, I reckon. Good time, don't I you? I think so, yeah. Get out the wind. Yeah. Directly. So, uh, here I am again in my budget nature hike. My trusty nature hike. So far, it's done me proud. Uh, Tom's turned up in his ooh, Mr. Emissar over here. The new tent. He's bought himself the Elixir One. It's got its tidy little tent, isn't it? Yeah, here's a tidy tent, but I think it's a little operator area here. Like you can see, like that seems way off. That should be there. So I've just got to do a little bit of a bit tweaking. Of a tweaking, yeah. Well, mine looks like that. I've done a bit of tweaking to bring it back into 
shape, but... Yeah, it's brand new, so I'm quite pleased that all the pegs were here. So this is a one-man tent, you've got your little side entrance. Just in a space, not too much to fill, so hopefully it'll keep so you So you keep all your gear outside here. But the main thing for me as well is I like cooking. I can sit up in this one. I've still got six inches of head height in here, and that can open a bit more as well, so I've got a good space for cooking here and all my gear. Yeah. To what I don't consider it very heavy, but the lightweight community would. It just comes in at just over two kilos, but you can get that down low without bringing the protective thing and bits and bobs. So like the nature hike, it's got the ground mat again. You bring additional. Yeah, it feels similar sort of material. It feels a bit thicker. I must say to the nature hike. The nature hike is very thin compared to that. Really, because that I feels that really thin. That feels durable, more durable than the nature hike. And so my van goes great because that feels like it's leather. <laughs> yes, <Yeah. laughs> it weighs like it is. Well. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to do a bit more of a review on it because if you look online, there are reviews on the Elixir two, three, four. Yeah. Nothing on the Elixir one. So yeah, I mean, if you're trying to make an informed decision. It's not helpful if someone else hasn't tested it out for you. So hopefully no. tonight I can take a bit of an informed decision and maybe you can help me do a review on it because I'm enjoying your reviews at the moment. And I just make it up as I go along. <laughs> Look at something and go, oh, we'll talk about this bit now. And if you did any rip stop. Uh, yeah, I don't know all that. It's red, it's red and grey. <laughs> red and grey. Although that is that important. Is... It's red and grey. It's colour coded, so it's twat proof. Because yeah, everything, everything goes together. Clips to a grey thing and everything that's red clips to a red thing. All right, so why Tom's tweaking now, I'm going to say up the uh, top and we've just got a bit of a, a base area then for cooking. Sound good? Sounds great. It's been so long since I've set up the DD hammock top that I cannot remember for the life of me how it really goes. Good, good job we sort of chose sooner than later to camp. <laughs> right, we're heading down now to get some water. Got the uh, Sawyer Mini again. I haven't used it for ages. I cannot for the life of me remember how to put that f***ing DD hammock top up. You're very calm about it, I was going to say. <laughs> Throwing a few obscenities about here and there. I thought we'd have a little walk. And uh, chill the f out. Here's the spring. Taking Tom a tip. I can't remember who gave it to me. Someone said, use a plastic bottle and they're easier to fill up. So, sort of done look. All right, so we've got plenty of water. The plastic bottle didn't really work as much because you get to a point where you can't squeeze it anymore and you're scrunching the bottle up and the last sort of bit in the bottle wasn't coming out any quicker than a trickle. You couldn't get pressure like you can in a squeezy bottle, so I think I'll just get a bigger squeezy bottle. Never knew. Japanese company. Mm -hmm. A litre and a half, he said. Yeah, and you can roll it up and tie it all together with that with your filter inside it. That's cracking. So what, you get two of them, one for the filter and one to filter into? I just got one and I filter into my... Oh, right, so that's unfiltered in there. Yeah, that's my dirty water yeah. that I plug filter on in. And he's ready to go later. Yeah. That's a good idea. Why well, have I never thought of that? Oh, because it's a good idea. <laughs> Here we are, back to camp. That was a hard slog up there. I felt that. What have you got there, Tom? I've got a flapjack. Oh, is that a summit or nothing flapjack? It certainly is. <laughs> really nice. Yeah. It's like the, the goo to crunch ratio is perfect. Yeah, I do. I'll have one too then. Got one in here. I made a new batch, you see. So let's see what it's like. It's like three cakes in one. It's like Reese's Pieces, a flapjack, and a fruit loaf. Mmm, that's mm. good. I do love a flapjack. Losing light now. It's nice though, isn't it? Calm. It's yeah, really calm. Yeah, we found a good spot. Yeah. I think the wind must have died down as well because it was blowing a bit when we was putting the tents up, wasn't it? Yeah. There we go. Top set up. And that's our cooking station for the night. The communal area. Cooking today! What's for tea, Tom? Coconut and spinach dal. And here's a, a mixture of stuff, so red lentils, garam masala, ginger, salt, pepper, cumin, turmeric, sun-dried tomatoes, 
dehydrated mixed veg, one massive tablespoon of dried coconut milk. And this one's nice and easy. You just bosh it in the pot, add the water, add heat, stir when it's bubbling, simmering, and you can let it be. So, literally just get it. See if it smells nice, Tom. Yeah. Cover it, put it on the flame. Once that's boiling, we're gonna put it onto a simmer. So, meanwhile, cocaine. A massive bag of sniff. Yeah. yeah. It's just flour, ground almonds, and a fistful of sultanas. So it's gonna be Peshwari anak bread. The key is, make a little well in the center. It doesn't have to be neat. And then you're gonna add a tiny bit of water. I'm gonna to start to mix it, catching the flour at the edge of, with the edge of the spoon. So when it's starting to get a bit sticky like that, I'm gonna start to knead it. Why did the uh, baker's hand smell? Because he on. needed a poo. We. This is a messy old tread, isn't it? It is. Get into a ball, and then you can squish it down in your hands. And you want a low flame for it. I was going to try flipping it. You going to go for it? Yeah. Oh, oh, don't. Yeah, so don't flip it unless you know you're going to land it. Oh, spinach. I'm going to add the spinach to mine. The great thing about spinach is it shrinks. Breads are smelling nice anyway. I can smell them. That's looking, That's looking good, yeah. It's coming on. How are you getting on with it? Mmm, no, it's tasty. I'm trying to get the bread now. Yeah, I don't like it. No, it's good. Cracking. Yeah. yeah. So there we go. Spinach and coconut dal and some trying to cook bread. So there you go. Thank you, Tom. You're welcome. Well, uh, I'll shut it off now and we'll just eat. You don't need to see us eat. Well, here I am in the tent. Bit of sad news. The uh, inflatable mat is losing its life. It's, uh, I've flown it up a minute ago and now it's sort of gone. Obviously, I do bring the other one, but that's not very comfortable. But, but anyway, it's been a good day. It's nice to meet Tom. Always a bit daunting when you're thinking um, you're meeting someone who, let's be honest, all I've seen of him is his hands cooking around a tranger. 10 o'clock. Generally a nice day. I mean, um, yeah, we've been arranging this for a little while and finally everything aligned that we could have a little outing together. Obviously it's a bit weird because you don't know what someone's going to be like. I've got an idea. I've watched his channel for a while now and uh, I sort of got the gist of him. Whereas for him, I'm a complete stranger. I think generally we've got a similar sense of humour, getting on well. It was all going really well until just after dinner when he turned around and just said, Tom, Paint me like one of your French girls. So anyway, now I'm in the tent, settling down for the night. It's raining fair out there now. I've got an audio book again, so I'm gonna just stick some headphones in and have a bit of a chill. Hopefully I'll sleep at some point. At gunpoint, we've left the tarp set up. We've just got a few of the cooking bits underneath there, so hopefully that won't take off in the night, shouldn't we? Ready for bed now. All cozy, zipped up in the tent. Yeah, half ten. I don't get that kind of night in the other world. You know, there's always something to do. I go to bed at 11, 12. Always uh, something to binge on, Netflix. Some editing I need to do, or something I didn't do in the day that I've got to catch up with. And you step out onto the moors, and we pitched up on a place we thought looked suitable, and now I'm in bed, and it's like half ten. I'm relatively warm, I've got shelter. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to just having an early night. I'm really looking forward to waking up, having breakfast and carrying on. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's good to get away. So you uh, you set your bedding up, get comfy, get your long johns and your thermals on, get comfy and warm, zip yourself into your sleeping bag and then uh, you need a piss. Yeah, that's just happened. Toilets. Oh, I ain't getting out in this, not in a minute. I'll hang on. You never know, it might slow down a bit, the weather. So is life, so is camping. The way of the hill. The way of the hill. Hey, Tom. Yes, Tom? Have you seen the weather forecast? Do you know what? I was thinking about looking, but I haven't looked, no. All right. In for a treat. I've just, I just looked and it's a, a weather warning in place from the Met Office. 
for the sort of area we're in, expecting to get pretty wet and pretty windy. Um, three o'clock should be a, a lot of fun. Well, what did you expect coming out with me camping? Um, <laughs> only the best. Uh, yeah, I only looked because I got a message from my dad saying, make sure you don't hang around tomorrow because there's 60 mile an hour winds forecast. Oh, for Christ's sake. It, see, that's what it looked like at the beginning of the week, but then it looked better as the week went on. Yeah, it did It, it did look better, but... Um, it's changed its mind. Changed its mind. <laughs> oh, we've got that to look forward to then. Yeah, strong winds from the southwest, um, which is the side of the hill that we chose to camp on, wasn't it? I think it is, isn't it? <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, hopefully the tents stay up and the top's still there in the morning. Yeah, well, it's a good test for my new tent and my new gear, and it's a good test for your um, pitching skills. Hopefully it's not going to pick up the tarp like a sail, because it's all opened up, isn't it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm feeling pretty cosy at the moment, so I'm happy with it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm quite toasty at the minute. Yeah. I'm sure it'll be a cosy night. It just might be a bit of a horrible pack-up tomorrow. Yeah. Well then, buddy. All right. Good luck. Sweet dreams. Godspeed. <laughs> the wind is starting to pick up now. I don't know if we're up to 40 miles an hour or not, but it's getting lively out there. I'm a bit concerned about the tarp. <laughs> I just hope that the wind doesn't come in the front. Fuck it. And get rid of it. But the temperature in here had dropped. I've got started to get cold, so I've put another layer on. I don't usually put this one on. And also, I've tested out in these gloves those hand warmers. They look, they look like silicon gel packets. You just shake them up, shove them in the gloves. So I just thought, mm, I've got them. I just well use them. Me, Matt, has shrunk and I'm feeling a lot of cold coming through the ground. But anyway, midnight, the wind's coming. Let's see how the nature like goes today. Oh, nature like, don't let me down. There's some, some wind now. I'm in it down. A little bit cold. So, let's see what happens. Oh, still tense holding up. Probably outlast me. The wind started now, and the tent is moving all over the place. Look at this light. It's bouncing around. And this is just the start of it. So this is going to be the test tonight. And it's also nice to know that the wind has changed direction and it's not, it's not coming in the entrance way as we thought. But it's coming from the side so I'm getting complete batter in here and it's noisy. You wouldn't think it's the same night that we sat out there earlier drinking our coffees, it was just still as hell. Well, all good fun. So we have to get out in the middle of the night and walk home because our tents have ripped to pieces. Oh, wasn't quite the weather forecast that I saw and was putting faith in my gear. So this is a real test for my tent and for my own <laughs> my, my own stamina. So we'll see which breaks first. I don't think I'll get much sleep. I mean, the wind will sort of feel like it's stopping, dying down, and then pick up again. I can hear our communal area flapping quite heftily. I can hear it flapping, it's still there. So, all that had happened there was the outside door had worked itself loose and the top.
tarp seems quite about it. I don't think it's blown away, but I think it's blown down. It does sound like it's on the floor, battling about. You know, I said it was cold earlier, and I put them little hand warmers in my gloves, I've put the extra jump in. But I'm really toasty again now, I'm really hot. I think I've had a couple of hours sleep without looking at the clock, I don't know what time it is. 3.06. This was when it was going to be worse, at 3 o'clock. Yeah, I should charge people to have the summit on up an experience. Well, people paid to go like round like the passage to terror and get scared and stuff like that. Maybe people would pay to come and have a miserable experience in a tent. You certainly enjoy watching them on the channel. I think I've just come up with a new, a lucrative new scheme there. I really do rate this tent so far. But I'm saying that because I'm dry and comfortable. It's going to be the windiest at three. Yeah, I guess tomorrow we won't be hanging about. Whoa, look at it. It's just got hell of a gusty. The whole tent was pressed in on me then. <laughs> I thought, that's it, it's gone. It's collapsed. As soon as it laid off, it is uh, back up again. I keep thinking I hear in snaps and snicks and tears. We're quite exposed here on the side of a hill. <laughs> it's a long night. <laughs> My tent is. It woke me up because it was on me, but I was like, oh no. But actually, it's still like doing amazingly well. It's just really f***ing windy, but. I'm surprised I've actually managed to sleep somewhat. I had weird dreams, really weird dreams. I dreamt that I was camping with my dad. We woke up in the morning and realised that we'd pitched on a motorway. And I'm cold. What I do is I get the top of my sleeping bag and I tuck it in like I'm a human tortilla. But then I have to breathe, so... It's collapsed here now, look. It's right down. The frame's still standing, but it's, uh, it's flat. It's flat for me, isn't it? It's still all connected. It's still all hanging on the frame. The frame's still upright. I don't know if I'll be able to get out, re-peg that side. I might have a try. Pull that side tight. It sort of makes you think, do you just count your losses and pack up? But I've got two tents to pack up in the dark. This has been something else. I stuck my head out, had a look, and the tarp's there. It's flat on the ground. But it hasn't gone anywhere, it's just pegged in alright. It's just collapsed. Where are we now? Five o'clock. Sunrise, Yelverton. It's another hour and 42 minutes. I think the most... Oh, Jesus. I think the most annoying thing about all this is this morning when I was driving to meet Trev, this wasn't remotely in the forecast. I'm not saying I wouldn't have done it anyway. It's just, it would have been nicer to wake up on a stillish morning without feeling like my tent was going to shit itself. There is no back of my tent anymore. Right, I see the corners come out here, look. It's come out, I can try and put that back. Some other bit of upright. Look at how much is dense in here. It's still pegged in though. It's like Penny Fan, isn't it? This is tarp. I'll just wrap it up a bit. And then Tom. Your tent. 
that seems to be fair enough, all right, Tom? Yeah. It's doing all right, really. Yeah, it's doing all right. It takes me a few times in the night, but I think I trust the flex a bit more than, yeah. I might just collapse this tarp in a minute and wrap it up. I can't really hear a word he's saying. That's what I was trying to sleep in. <laughs> Holding up well. Oh, that's half my home for the night. <laughs> I can't believe it. Well, sort of giving up now. I'm packing up. Dawn is on the horizon. Um, Tom managed to make a couple of coffees. But yeah, he got the fan to go in. In this, enough to boil some water. No, he's packing up. I think it's going to be a two-man job to take the tents down. We've had quite a lot of rainfall in the night as well, so our route home might be waterlogged. So the gators are on. As soon as it stops, it springs back to life. It might not be so bad if I was facing the wind, you know, but the wind turned, it comes side on. I don't stand a chance against 50 mile an hour wind. But, better than the tarp. You think if that was Nafe out, that's where he would have been. But then his probably would have been put up a bit better than mine. <laughs> Alright, packing up. Well, survived the camp. Just about. Just to walk home now. Just to walk to the car, into the wind. Yeah. It's tent spanage all right, look, it's still, still the shape it's supposed to be. More or less. My poor old thing, look at it. Standing up to it though. That's what it's for though, isn't it? Did you keep dry last night? Yeah, it was dry. Same. Just not much room in there once it starts <laughs> caving in. Yes. Well, looking forward to ripping it down and fucking getting home. Cooking breakfast first. Yeah. <laughs> Thought you'd done well to get the coffees on. Yeah, yeah, it was a bit of a fight, but yeah, it hasn't happened. Crit while we're ahead. Yeah. It's been a venture though, isn't it? Yeah, I've had fun somehow. Yeah. <laughs> it's like two different days in one, eh? But it was Saturday and Sunday. But that's it too. <laughs> I think so, yeah. Partly there. Could be shielded from the wind, yeah. That's painful to watch. You that wouldn't is. be enjoying that, would you, in there now? I'm enjoying it now. <laughs> Yeah, this is silly weather to camp in, isn't it? <laughs> oh, that looks a bit more like my tent now. That is some strong wind, isn't it? Look at it. D1. That was straight then, was it? Yeah. Very disappointing with that. Yeah. Especially MSR, you'd think. Yeah. You'd stand up to it, wouldn't you? Yeah. You'd think they'd have designed that to work. And there as well, look. No, definitely straight, was I? Yeah, definitely straight. No. There's me singing its praises at night. Gutted. We've reached the river. There's a track the other side. We're going to try and stay this side and hopefully somewhere to pass. Or I'll use you as a bridge. Yeah. <laughs> but we're going to keep walking that way because that's the way home. So 
It'd be stupid to walk that way. out you know was that thanks for arranging that weather that was, that was <laughs> it good. wouldn't have been the true experience without it would it no I, yeah no not at all i had a lot of fun though even in the hefty wind uh, it was hefty wasn't it yeah really hefty it'd be Fine. interesting to see how hefty it was yeah it was um yeah loud it was quite, it was quite a brutal yeah evening. but i was really pleased with the tent because it was standing up and then i was really not impressed with the tent so <laughs> Buckled it, a bit. It broke, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's got a little things, especially when equipment, but you spend decent yeah. money on. Hey, MSR stands for, is it Mountain Search and Rescue? You'd think they'd have a clue how to make a tent. Yeah. So they might want to sort that out. Hopefully, I just got one bad one. I don't want to no. bad mouth them. But I think that was a fair test, you know. I think it's not me. I'm not being unreasonable by saying it's a bad tent if it didn't deliver as a tent. No. Yeah, there you go. Anyway, but that was the only thing. Everything else was good. You've seen a lot of sights. It was great. The food was oh, it was brilliant. I can't recommend cooking your own food out on the trail enough. It was like freshly cooked food and that curry last night. You'd have paid good money for that in a restaurant. You know, it was tasty. And... Anyway, so thank you for watching. Thanks to Tom for coming along. Good bit of company. Good laugh. Good chap. Good cook. Good enough. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, mate. Cool, so don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. More adventures coming up soon. Yes. Peace. <laughs>